Long Box Review, Episode 23. Hi, this is Eric from Longbox Review at longboxreview.wordpress.com. Welcome to the April Previews episode for things that are shipping in June 2012 and beyond. We'll start off today by looking at the Marvel previews first. First up here in Marvel is Spider-Men, number one and two, of five, by Brian Michael Bendis and Sarah Pacelli on the art. There's a picture here of a red spider on a black background with the word classified plastered over it. And the tagline is, History will be made for the Marvel Universe. And that's all we know about it. I really don't like it when comic publishers do this, when you you just get this, you get a title and you get a very nondescript image and nothing really telling you what this series is about. It makes it kind of hard to determine whether or not you're going you're gonna to pick it up. And I'm talking about the people like me who don't normally read Spider-Man or Marvel Comics all that much in general. So what entices us to buy this comic? Other than this tagline and the allure of the possibility, I suppose. This is uh, kind of gruesome. Uh, the cover image to Amazing Spider-Man number 688. The lizard has, has Spider-Man's neck and upper torso in his mouth. And it's just, and there's blood everywhere. It's It's really gruesome looking. Here's something interesting. Amazing Fantasy number 15, colon, Spider-Man. Uh, this is a one-shot, 399, 40 pages. It's collecting material from Amazing Fantasy number 15 and Amazing Spider-Man number 1. Relive the adventures that started it all, it says. Uh, Thrill to Spidey's debut issues, completely remastered and beautifully recolored in modern style by a French artist that, whose last name I can't pronounce, but his first name is Jean-Francois. And did I miss this? I thought uh, the Captain America and I thought there was a I thought there was a Captain America and Hawkeye series, but I see that there are two issues being solicited: Captain America and Hawkeye, which is six thirty two, and Iron Man, which is six thirty three. Is this the the Captain America team up book? And I, I somehow missed that. And uh, the reason I mentioned this, or the reason it caught my eye at least, is that one Barry Kitson is doing the art on number 633. And it also says, first issue in an all-new arc. It's also written by Colin Bunn. So those two people together on on a new story arc, I might be enticed to buy a Captain America comic. Page 41 of the Marvel previews has the Invincible Iron Man 518 and 519. Uh, But what's what's interesting here is that this is the new Iron Man, and you get this uh, black armor with, with that's lit up in this in this kind of white light uh, in various places and then the the, the kind of gold faceplate um it says the new iron man explodes into action who is the new iron man i just think that looks kind of neat i don't know what's going on in iron man but i'm intrigued now and for those man thing fans out there you and you know who you are here's the infernal man thing number 1 of 3 written by steve gerber with kevin nolan on art cover by art adams uh, says here, Steve Gerber's final Man-Thing story, 20 years in the making. The story no one thought existed. Oh, it also said, so this is 32 pages, 399, no ads and bonus content. So there you go. For the Incognito fans, Ed Brubaker and Sheldon Phillips series, um, a couple of them, you get the classified edition, hardcover, uh, $45. But you get Incognito and its sequel, Bad Influences. Both were very good, by the way. If you haven't read them, you should. Along with many um, behind-the-scenes extras, previously unseen illustrations, and even a few articles. This is the edition you want on your bookshelf, it tells me. And I kind of do. Because, that, like I said, uh, the Incognito um, is what introduced me to Brubaker and Phillips' collaboration. And I've, I've, I've read that. I've read the sequel. I've started to read the Criminal series. I'm reading Fatal right now. It's all good stuff. Very good stuff. So I may have to pick this up so I can have it on my bookshelf and I can pull it out anytime in a nice hardcover edition and read it. 
for fans of Mark Millar's Kick-Ass, you get, and John Romita Jr., excuse me, um, you get Hit Girl, the miniseries, number one of five, which takes place, it says here, between volumes one and two. And since I have the Star Trek bottle opener, it was a gift, uh, I, I have to mention this, the Silver Surfer Sculpted Bottle Opener for $18. There you go. In the Collected Editions portion of Marvel Previews, you have Avenging Spider-Man, My Friends Can Beat Up Your Friends premiere hardcover. This is collecting Avenging Spider-Man number one through five. Uh, if you haven't read the series uh, monthly, here's your chance to read that first those first five issues. I can't say that I would recommend it. I'm currently getting it, but it's not that great. And for those completists out there, uh, you have the, I guess, sequel to Fear Itself, The Fearless. Here's the collected hardcover. You get The Fearless 1 through 12 and material from Fear Itself 7. Speaking of collected editions, we have the 12, volume 2, the hardcover for that. So you get the 12, number 7 through 12, and the 12 spearhead one shot all together. I believe I mentioned this on a previous previews episode, but I'm waiting for Marvel to come out with the 12 complete series because I want to read that story. And how did I miss this? Um, Spellbinders, Signs and Wonders trade paperback. This is a series written by Mike Carey, which is one of my favorite writers. I had, had no idea that he did a series here for Marvel. So this collects Spellbinders 1 through 6. I may have to buy that just to just to check it out based on Mike Carey's work. And here you go, Alpha Flight, the complete series. Trade paperback. You get Alpha Flight point one and issues one through eight. Um, if you really, really want to read something that, or really, really want to read new Alpha Flight for thirty bucks, there you go. I cannot recommend it, however. Also, in the somewhat disappointing category, um, is the first trade of the Defenders, the by Matt Fraction and Terry Dodson. Um, I. I'm still getting that series, but it's not as interesting as I thought it would be, though there are some aspects of it that I, that I do enjoy, mostly Doctor Strange. Uh, but if you were, again, on the fence about it, didn't pick up the issues, here you go, you can, you can read the first story. And speaking of reading the story, uh, when you didn't get the issues, I may pick this up because this is X-Men Schism, the trade paperback, collecting the Schism miniseries and X-Men Regenesis. So I, I've heard a lot about this this series, and I, like I said, I may pick that up to find out what happened between Wolverine and Cyclops. And finally from Marvel, not a comic, but a poster. And I just think it's stinking cute. You have the Avengers vs. X-Men by Scotty Young poster. This is just wonderful. All right, now off to the main previews catalog, starting with Dark Horse. And first up is a new series, The Massive, by Brian Wood and Christian Donaldson with Dave Stewart on colors. Let's see, this is a post-war, post-apocalyptic uh, story featuring environmentalists searching for its, as it says here, mysteriously missing sister ship, The Massive. So... Uh, so the tag, or not the tagline, the, the, some ad copy here reads, The perfect follow-up to DMZ for those fans, which I have not read all of that series, uh, but I have read some of it, and it is really good. And Brian Wood is a very good writer, so this is, I think, a must-read for me. There's a new Gilbert Hernandez series, Fatima, the Blood Spinners. Uh, not for me, but in case you're a... A Gilbert Hernandez fan. It says here, love and, or it says rockets, but rockets is crossed out. And, and right after that, zombies. I'm, I'm so sick of zombies. Anything having, anything has to do basically with vampires and zombies in comics, I'm immediately turned off. Here's a lovely cover image by Phil Noto of Ghost in Dark Horse Presents number 13. And that's the issue that I will start getting this series and for Buffy the Vampire Slayer fans, here is a tie-in miniseries, Drusilla, number one of five, but written by the actress who portrayed Tru uh, Drusilla, Juliet Landau. Speaking of Buffy, uh, for those 
Waiting for the Trade. Here is Buffy the Vampire Slayer Season 9, Volume 1, for $18, collecting issues number 1 through 5. All right, moving on to DC now. And the news about the Before Watchmen, which I think broke, or at least cracked the internet when it was announced. Here are the first of several miniseries set in the Watchmen universe before the series itself. Before Watchmen Minutemen number one is the first one here in previews on page 74. This is written by Darwin Cook with with art by Darwin Cook. This is one of six for three ninety nine. So I guess there goes the towing the line at two ninety nine price, but I this this is a special series, I suppose. They can charge an extra dollar. It is thirty two pages. Here's the next one before Watchmen Silk Spectre number one, written by Darwin Cook, but uh, oh I'm sorry, written by Darwin Cook and Amanda Connor, with art by Amanda Connor. This is uh one of four, also three ninety nine. Third one in the list, Before Watchmen Comedian, number one of six, by Brian Azzarello, and art by J.G. Jones. Uh, this is one where I'm really not all that interested. I, I never cared for the, the comedian as a character that, that much in Watchmen. I mean, he's, he's an in, integral part of the story, and he serves a purpose in the story, but to, to read more about him before Watchmen, I'm not all that interested. However, being the completest collector that I am, I may decide to read that. Next is Before Watchmen, Night Owl, number one of four, by J. Michael Straczynski, and art by Andy Kubert and Joe Kubert. It's interesting that why some of these are six issues and others are four. I find this funny uh, just for the... The, the, the solicitation text. The Savage Hawkman, which is plotted by Rob Liefeld, scripted by Rob Liefeld and Mark Poulton, uh, with art by Joe Bennett and, and Art Thibert. Uh It says, Get your popcorn because the first scene of this issue, in this issue, just might be the best battle you see all year. Wow, that's really saying something, and I really doubt it. There's some really great cover images in here. I like the black and red highlighted costumes in, uh, for Superboy number 10, showing Superboy and Wonder Girl. And then down below, this is on page 91, Supergirl number 10, where Supergirl is wearing a white outfit, riding what looks to be a black dragon of some sort. Also, the, the image here on page 93 for Batman number 10 by Greg Capullo. That looks pretty cool. It has Batman in the foreground and the and, and uh, owl wings as, a, as a, like a shadow on, on a wall behind him. That looks really cool. Oh, it's a good thing I get this, this title, Batman and Robin. The, this is the solicitation for number 10. Someone calls a meeting of the Robins, and you on, on the cover here you have Red Robin, Damian Robin, Nightwing, and Red... Um, Red Hood and Batman in the background coming towards Robin and Red Robin who appear to be fighting each other. So anything having to do with the Robins, I'm, I'm, I'm all on board and I'll be looking forward to that. As to DC's collected editions, you get the Superman Action Comics Volume 1 collecting issues 1 through 8. Man, if you haven't read Action Comics, uh, you're missing out. This is uh, one of the best Superman stories I've read in many years. So if you, if you if you were on the fence or you know thinking, well, you know it's Superman, it can't be that good. Well, you're wrong. This is very good stuff. You should check that out. Uh, Batwing: The Last Kingdom trade paperback. Now I did not read Batwing, uh, but my co-host Travis, Mr. Oddfellow, does and has, is telling me that it's a pretty good series. So. I may pick that up. And like I said about Action Comics being very good, uh, if you haven't read Demon Knights, you should pick up this trade. This is such a fun comic. It's one of my very favorite of the, the DC New 52. This collects Demon Knights 1 through 7. And that's a trade for 15 bucks. The Men of War title gets its um, entire 8-issue run collected in a trade paperback here. 
And I see that DC is is while not releasing as many, but they're they're continuing the wonderful DC Comics presents eight dollar collections. Yeah, this time Superman slash Supergirl number one. This uh, features stories from Superman, Batman number 19, Superman 176, Supergirl number one, which I've actually been wanting to read. DC Infinite Halloween special number one and DC Holiday special number one, which I think I have. Uh, I will be getting that because I like the DC Comics Presents collections. And here's another DC Comics Presents collection, but this is for Superman Adventures. This features tales from Superman Adventures 16, 19, 22, and 23. Written by Mark Millar. I had no idea. Mark Millar worked on Superman Adventures. I'll have to pick that one up. Next to that is Looney Tunes number 207. Now, normally I don't I don't pay attention to the Looney Tunes comics. I love the Looney Tunes cartoons from when I was a kid. But reading comics about cartoons that I loved as a kid just doesn't appeal to me all that much. Uh, however. The cover to this, and it appears that the story itself is all about Daffy Duck, and Daffy Duck is my absolute favorite Looney Tunes character, so I may have to pick up that issue. For fans of political stories, we get the Right State Hardcover, a graphic novel by Matt Johnson, and art by Andrea Muti, Muti which is a story about an assassination plot against the second African-American president of the United States. Fans of American Vampires should be happy. Uh, you get uh, a new miniseries called Lord of Vampires. This is issue one being solicited of five. Written, of course, by Scott Snyder. Art is by Dustin Nguyen. I may have to pick that up. I, I did pick up at the recommendation of Matt at the comic book shop in Spokane. I picked up issue number one of American Vampire because he enjoyed it. And I asked him, you know, what should I be reading these days at that time? And he recommended that, um, but it wasn't my cup of tea, but all I've been hearing about is how good this is, or how good American Vampire is, so maybe I'll pick up this miniseries and, and see what I think about it. Maybe I'll go back and get the trades of American Vampire. Fans of Scalped will be dismayed, I'm sure, uh, because Scalped number 60 is solicited and it is the final issue. I've heard nothing but good things about this series. I have the first trade on my bookshelf, waiting to be read among the dozen or two that I have in my to-read pile. But, as I said, uh, all I've heard is, is really good things about this series, so I can't wait to get into that. Next up is IDW, and the first thing they have listed here is Mars Attacks. The first stories of an all-new Mars Attacks universe are here. I love that movie, uh, but I, I, I don't know that I have any kind of interest in reading a series, a, a comic series based on it. This is interesting though, um, 55 different covers, each depicting one card from the original 1962 set. And for those about to rock, you can get a new KISS series that will, as it says here, appeal to longtime fans and new readers alike. This, uh, this is done by Chris uh, Ryle and Jamal Eigel on art. IDW continues its Artists Edition series, uh, this time with featuring Sergio Aragones, Grew the Wanderer. Here's the collected edition on page 162 of Star Trek and the Legion of Superheroes, hardcover for $25. I cannot recommend that. That was a disappointing series, and I'm really now concerned about how well the Star Trek The Next Generation and Doctor Who collaboration will go. But if you're a fan like I was uh, of, of these properties and you see them together, you got to see what it's like and, you know, hoping for the best, here you go. You can get the hardcover. Uh, if you absolutely have to read this, man, I would I would recommend waiting for the trade or maybe picking up the issues in the dollar bin somewhere. On to Image Comics, where you get Spawn number 220, which is the 20th anniversary issue and features Todd McFarlane returning to Spawn as writer and cover artist. Here's a new series from Image, Planetoid, by Ken Gehring, story and art. It's about a guy who's trapped on this this planet in alien territory, and he has to fend off mechanical creatures and cyborg militias. Here's another new number one from Image, Creator-Owned Heroes. 
This is 40 pages for $3.99. Story is by Steve Niles, Jimmy Pamiotti, and Justin Gray, with art by Phil Noto and Kevin Mellon. There are two stories in here. American Muscle, which is by Steve Niles and Kevin Mellon, and Trigger Girl 6, Part 1, by Pamiotti, Gray, and Phil Noto. Plus you get an interview with Neil Gaiman, Trigger Girl cosplay, con photos, and more. I may have to pick that up. For fans of Carbon Gray, you get Volume 2, Number 1 of 3, Daughters of Stone. I've heard that's a pretty good story. I have the first volume, the first trade of the first volume, sitting on my shelf to read. So I may eventually get this in a trade version. This is really interesting, and it's by one of my favorite writers, Stephen Siegel. The Red Diary, slash the Red, as in R-E-A-D, Diary flipbook hardcover. So stories are by Teddy Christensen and Stephen Siegel, with art by Teddy Christensen. It says here, a bold experiment in the graphic novel. Christensen's European album is newly translated to English, by Teddy Christensen, Christensen and Steven Siegel. But in a unique flip novel format, the book is also remixed with a completely different script devised by Siegel before he collaborated on the translation. Both versions, both versions, The Red Diary, A Tale of Art Forgery and World War, and The Red Diary, A Tale of Identity Theft and Lost Love, comprise this unique graphic novel from these two creators. Hmm. That is for 20, I'm sorry, $30. For those who decided to wait for the trade uh, in regards to Brubaker and Phillips's Fatale, here's Volume 1, the Death Chases Me trade paperback, collects the first five issues. I've been enjoying that. And here's something else I would enjoy just looking at. Um, Frank Cho's Liberty Meadows Sunday Collection Book 1, hardcover for $25. You get the first three years of the Sunday strips of Liberty Meadows. And then the next volume, which collects years 4 through 5, will be published in November, it says. Oh, here's here's something nice. Uh, Morning Glories Volume 3 PE trade paperback collecting issues 13 through 19. I will be buying that for sure. And if we haven't had enough of The Walking Dead, and who hasn't had enough of that, you get the latest volume, 16, A Larger World, collecting issues 91 through 96. I am a little behind on my Walking Dead trades. I think I need to get the last two or three, well, maybe three or four now, with this latest volume being solicited. All right, moving on to the other comic publishers in previews, starting on page 226. Rachel Rising, the latest series by Terry Moore. I just read the first trade paperback of that, and wow, what, what an interesting and somewhat horrific series this is. There's a few scenes in that Drawn by Terry Moore, who is one of my favorite artists, but he, I mean, he draws such beautiful pictures, and yet this beautiful art is juxtaposed with these horrific things that these characters are doing. Uh, it's, uh, it's certainly different for him, based on his previous work, Strangers in Paradise and Echo. Uh, and the covers to this series, if you haven't looked at these, you really should. These are really interesting and memorable color covers, mostly for the color work that's on it. Anyway, you should check out Rachel Rising if you haven't yet. And if you haven't checked out his other work, Echo, you can get the complete edition softcover that's being resolicited here for $40. Well worth it. 600 pages. Go get it and read it. You'll love it. From Aspen comes their first ever, it says, superhero series called Idolized. This is a number zero issue. I don't know why they do zero issues. Just come out with a number one issue and go from there. Anyway. This is, um, it says here, a mind-bending new comic book series about a TV show where superpowered teens are competing for the ultimate dream prize, a guaranteed spot in the world's top supergroup, the Powered Protectors. It says here, it's True Grit meets American Idol with capes. Uh, the preview art that you get here, just a few cover images and, and a few pages, but uh, by, this is by artist Micah Gunnell, uh, written by David Schwartz, but at least you get a sense of the art by Mr. Gunnell, and it, it looks pretty good. I might check out this number zero issue just to see. Aspen is, has kind of gotten on my radar thanks to Lady Mechanica and some, some of the preview and free issue material that I've read from Aspen on Comixology. 
Ooh, this is interesting. From Avatar Press, here comes Bleeding Cool Magazine number zero. Well, there's that zero thing again. But anyway, this is this is Bleeding Cool in a magazine form. Retail price one forty nine for thirty two pages. For a buck fifty, yeah, I'll be getting this. Boom has a new series, Extermination, which when I first saw the image, I thought and 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 the the tagline which is, we lost, they won. Uh, and the image shows this guy with a knife attacking an alien. Uh, you know, so obviously it's it's a story about aliens invade and it's our fight against them. So at first I wasn't all that intrigued by it, but then I, I read the rest of the solicitation, which is basically the world's superheroes and supervillains must ally themselves together to fight this invasion. And, and I'm intrigued by how that kind of a partnership will play out. So it's a dollar for the first issue. It's written by Simon Spurrier, uh, who has done, it says here, Marvel's X Club, Fear Itself, The Homefront, and Wolverine Dangerous Games. I've not read any of those. It doesn't seem to, at least that I'm as I'm looking at this, it doesn't seem to say who the artist is. Tells you who has done all the covers. Why would they not tell us who the artist is? That's really strange. This is kind of nice. Boom has a bunch of their uh, Emerald City Comic Con exclusive cover prints for for their various issues like Peanuts and Snarked and Adventure Time as well. So you can you can get those copies that were at Emerald City Comic Con for those who could not make one of the best cons of the year. Uh, here we go. Cartoon books releases the final issue of Rassel by Jeff Smith. Number 15. Uh, I have not followed that comic, although I did, this, in this last year, read all of the Bone stuff by Jeff Smith, which I enjoyed very much. So when I got here to page 273 for Dynamite Entertainment, it's, they have this one big page that says, From the dawn of time to the end of days. And I immediately think, Highlander, right? Uh, but it's not. It's a company crossover event called Prophecy, written by Ron Mars, with art by Walter Giovanni. And it says it's a seven-issue self-contained event, so you don't need to read anything else but this. And it features the characters Vampirella, Red Sonia, Kulin Gath, Dracula, Eva, Herbert West, the reanimator, Alan Quatermain, Athena, Dorian Gray, Purgatory, Pantha, and many more. I'm kind of intrigued by that, even though I don't read any of those characters or titles. So, One of my all-time favorite novels, Ray Bradbury's Fahrenheit 451, is a new graphic novel uh, with art by Tim Hamilton. You can get it in a softcover edition or hardcover. Uh, $16.95 for the former and $30 for the latter. And since we're on the subject, here's Ray Bradbury's The Martian Chronicles graphic novel, uh, a book I have not read, but this is art by Dennis Calero. You can also get this in a softcover or hardcover edition for similar prices. And that is put out by Hill and Wang. This is on page 297. And I see that Oni Press is following Marvel's bad example by releasing multiple issues of a series in one month. But at least this is a two-issue only series. Bad Medicine, number one and two. This is written by Nunzio De Filippis and Christina Ware, with art by Christopher Mitten. Top Shelf is releasing the final volume of the League of Extraordinary Gentlemen Century series, number three, year 2009. I've read the 1910 volume, and I may just have to order the 1969 and 2009. Interesting. Why would why would it not be 1909 to go with the whole nine thing between the three volumes anyway? But that 1910 volume was was an interesting read. I talked in the last previews episode about the return of Valiant Comics, and here we get another series from them, Harbinger number one. This is by Joshua Dysart, with art by Carrie Evans. The preview stuff looks pretty good. I hope you enjoyed this examination of previews for things shipping in June and beyond. And if you did, please let me know. I'm at longboxreview at gmail.com. Or you can contact me on Twitter at longboxreview. 
Visit the blog at longboxreview.wordpress.com and all the contact information is there. You can leave comments as well. I'd love to hear from you. Until next time, thanks for listening.